Hello fellas, welcome back. I've came to see Paul. He's recently acquired a shipping container full of brand new Eggenberger parts. Yeah. Right, so before we carry on, let me quickly explain a little bit about what we're going to see. The parts Paul's had delivered are all genuine Eggenberger motorsport unused spares. Now in 1989, Rudy Eggenberger built the very first turbocharged car to win a Spa 24 hour race. It was an RS500, which Paul actually owns. In 1988, Eggenberger entered the European Championship and they qualified in the top three at every event with five pole positions. Right, now as we'll hear from Paul, Dick Johnson Racing, or DGR for short, who was from Australia, was known for building the fastest RS 500s ever. And obviously, he wanted the very best parts on his cars. Eggenberger parts were the obvious choice. Once Dick had Eggenberger parts fitted to his car, he won Bathurst in 1989 he also won the Touring Car Championship in 1988 and 1989. Now, let's get back to Paul and hear what the exciting plans are with the remaining spares. Yeah, all original, genuine stuff from back in period, yeah. All unused mint. All brand new, yeah. Mint parts. <laughs> so, can we start with this, mate? Well, this is the very, very last ever Eggenberger shell to be produced. Obviously, obviously unused. Yeah, they prepped them themselves at Eggenberger. You would buy a shell, same as all the teams did from Ford Motorsport, and then all the teams would prep it to their standard, how they wanted it doing. And this was the very last shell that Eggenberger had ever worked on. Um, we sat in the warehouse for years, because obviously the, the project for the Sierras had, had gone and they'd moved on to Mondeo's, uh -huh. and because they never crashed any of the original cars, they never needed the shell. Never used the shell. So they just left it sat there, along with all the other brand new parts that we've got. We're obviously just all out of the parts department where they'd have everything sat there to either build a new car or repair a, an old one or whatever. But this is the very, very last shell. It's mint as well, mind, isn't it? Like there's zero rust on it. It's uh, just a yeah. mint. It's been inside all its, it's been life, well looked luckily. After. Um, you can see it's got the air jack towers are in it. Um, all the fabrication's been done, the battery tear's been taken out, the bulkhead lip's been removed, seam welding done. There's a little bit that hasn't been done. You can see they hadn't completely finished it because it's even pen marks there, look. Oh, all right. Where, it, you know, that, that needs seam welding, but I'll finish that, I'll finish the seam welding. But all the back's done. As you can see, there's a full of junk at the moment, but you can see there all the seam welding's been done. The air jack towers are in the rear. All the seat mounting points have been removed and the holes welded up. You can see in the back there, you know, where all the seam welding done there. Oh, all the, the holes have been pre-drilled for all the fuel lines and that to come through into the fuel tank. There's a brand new fuel tank, fuel bladder. Uh -huh. That sits in. Would that still be hard to use or would it be no, out yet? No, because they'd be out of date, but you can repack it when you go for, but that sits in ah, there right like that. I. And then obviously, when you see the fuel fillers, when they put them in there, they pipe through into there and go into there. How much fuel does that? Uh, 120 litres. 120 litres? Yeah, that was a maximum you were allowed to carry. So obviously, even if you were doing a a long distance endurance race you had to pit and, and fuel but it was a rule everybody could only carry a maximum of 120 litres. This is a, it's an amazing condition as well. Can you open the door? Yeah, yeah. Obviously non-sunroof. Yeah, motorsport shell, so uh -huh. non-sunroof. Because all Cosworths were, actually, did have sunroof so this is... No, they didn't. Did they not? No, if you bought, um, you could buy in Europe you could buy a Cosworth without a sunroof. Really? Yeah, and also another thing that we're missing, you know on the, on the wings here, on, the, on our Cossies, uh -huh. you get a side repeater. Uh -huh. If you look at a lot of the European cars, they didn't have side repeaters. Did they not? No, they were a lot lower spec. They were cheaper than ours. Still electric windows and ABS and everything? No, you could get them with windy windows. Really? Yeah, all, all the mechanics was the same. Uh -huh. Basically, they just made the cars cheaper for the European market. Obviously, Europeans must be tighter than us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you could buy a lower spec. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Mind. you could, yeah. You could buy a lower spec one. Well, proper cosy. Uh -huh. Well, the RS all the RS 500s had sunroofs, though, didn't they? Oh, yeah, all the 500s had sunroofs. The, it was only the three-door, a, a European left-hand drive, right. lower spec. Well, the 500s were all that. exactly the same. So, yeah, uh -huh. there's um, a plan with this. It, well, it's got an interesting story about it, really. The, this shell <clears throat> and all the brand-new parts that we're going to have a look at, they were all purchased from Dick Johnson Racing in Australia. Uh-huh. They had an idea over in Australia, did Dick and Ryan Story. Ryan Story is the team manager for DJR Racing. 
and a few years ago um, they came up with an idea of building two new Sierras for um, which would be DGR7 and DGR8 because obviously one to six still all are alive obviously I own one two is in England three four five and six are still out in Australia and New Zealand so Dick and Ryan were going to set up an, their own little business if you will and their idea was was to build two brand new Sierras seven and eight and do like an arrive and drive day where you could turn up to race tracks and what have you and you could pay a fee and he could get to go out in an original RS500 with Dick Johnson, which... Experience you know, I, that, wouldn't I, it? Imagine Q being about four uh, miles long, you, you know. Get the front, wouldn't you? Incredible. I mean, I'd, I'd have even <laughs> flown over for that, you know, just to go... You imagine going around Bathurst with Dick Johnson uh, in a car. Unbelievable. Anyway, that was their idea. Um, so they purchased this shell with all the brand new Eggenberger parts, which... Funnily enough, all belong to Peter Sturgeon in New Zealand. Well, I bought the Bastos car off Peter Sturgeon. And when Peter bought the Bastos car from Switzerland, it came with all the spares, this shell and all the Eggenberger parts. But obviously in today's racing, hopefully you'll never need a spare shell. Aye. And there was that many parts, just weren't really needed. So Peter sold all this, this shell and the parts to Dick Johnson Racing for him and Ryan to, to build two cars with. Um, anyway, the story goes on that basically they just didn't have the time. Right. So he said to me, <clears throat> you know, we're going to have to move things on. Do I know anybody that would buy all the Eggenberger spares? And I, you know, I thought, I'd love them. You know, you know what I'm like with bits. And, but it was, all, as you can imagine, an awful lot of money. And uh, anyway, I sort of tried and tried to work out a plan of how I could finance it. Well, it just wasn't going to happen. Anyway, a friend of mine was looking to put a bit of money into some somewhere to make a bit of money back. Like an investment? Yeah, an investment. And we sort of worked out what we thought the parts were worth, what we were paying for them, and there was a profit in it. And obviously, with my connection with these race cars, it, it, I was sort of the right person to try and sell these pits. People knew me, they trusted me. So anyway, Gary... Um, said yeah we'll, we'll do it and we spoke to Ryan agreed a deal and agreed to get them all shipped over in a container over to England and the initial plan was just to sell everything and try and make a bit of a profit on it anyway that was all sort of ball was in in motion as it were and then um, Ryan rang me he says I've got a bit of an idea I says oh yeah he said well the second shell that we, we, we were going to use to build these two Sierras was the original promo car from Australia, a car that was built back in the day in period to look like a Dick Johnson race car, but what happened to... <laughs> hey, I. <laughs> I <can do> <laughs> um, what happened to that car? It ended up in a museum. You know, it was shipped around all the Ford dealers and, and bits and pieces and, and um, you know, people could see it, could look at it, and as far as they knew... <laughs> Excuse the cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as they knew, it was a, a real car. You know, they couldn't tell the difference. Uh -huh. Anyway, that car ended up in the museum. So Dick and Ryan purchased that off the museum. And that was going to be one of the two cars. And this was going to be the other. So Ryan said, you know, that we made a, a sort of a commitment to build these cars. And it involved a lot of people in Australia because they started this, what they call Project Sierra where all the Australian people, where people from anywhere in the world really, if they wanted to feel like part of the team, if you will, you could um, buy like memorabilia that, that had made caps, books, mugs, blah, blah, blah. Bit of merch. A, a bit of merchandise. And what you did, you paid your $50 or whatever it was, and you got a cap and a mug. You paid your $100, you got a frame picture and blah, blah, you know, and, and you could pay as much as you wanted. And, and the profits from that, were to help do Project Sierra and then obviously the payback on that was if anybody wanted to take up the offer of a, of a drive day they would get it at a, a, a discounted rate you know because you got like a membership card and everything. Right. So Ryan felt and Dick felt sort of a bit of an obligation to them people that had committed with them <clears throat> to, to see the project through really. So he rang me he says look how do you feel like building one of the cars for us? We, we've decided two is too much how would you feel about building one of the cars for us? Because we haven't got the time, you know, and it was very nice of him to say that in, in the RS500 world, 
I'm quite respected even on Australia as I am in England and the, and the people that committed to the project out there would be happy knowing that it was me that was going to complete the project uh -huh. if you like. So we thrashed the idea about and I thought well who on earth is ever going to turn down the opportunity exactly. to build a car exactly. for, for one of the most famous racing drivers in the world and particularly you know who, who was so successful in a Sierra and obviously I own DGR1, I restored DGR2 so it sort of made a lot of sense really so of course I, I thought about it for like three seconds <laughs> and yeah I'd love to you know I'd love that so he said well what we'll do we'll we've already stripped the other shell it's already a bare shell ready to get it dipped to to prepare it to be a proper race car we'll put that in the same container as the parts and we'll send it over to you and you start the project. Must have been amazing when that turned up your drive. Can we have a look at the shell next door? Yeah, of course we can, yeah. So this is going to be DGR7? It is. Well, this, as I say, it was, you can see it was done in the later livery, the later 1890 onwards livery where it had the shell down rather than the ultra high. But this was a um, like a promotional car. As you can see inside, it's got a roll cage in it. That, that's quite an interesting thing because that's one of the original steering wheels that all the Dick Johnson Sierras had. Really? Yeah, the kangaroo one as well? Yeah, so it's an original <laughs> thing. But it wasn't just a demo car. So it was prepared to look exactly like one of, one of the original race cars. So it's this got, was just a promo car for yeah, kids to sit in and exactly, stuff like that? Yeah, went to Ford dealers and things like that. And, uh, turned up at a lot of race tracks and things. And it, like you say, it was just a, a bit of fun, really. But it's a proper shell. It was a brand new shell when they built it. It's a genuine shell because you can tell under bonnet here it was never painted again because it was a promo car. So it never so, had an engine in? No. Oh yeah, it had a 1.6. Did it? Just so they could move it about. Did it start and run? Oh yeah, it started and oh. run so they could drive it in and out. Um, but you can see there, that's the grey primer from the original right. shell. Because obviously they never lifted the bonnet yeah, because okay. it had a 1.6L engine in it. So the shell. Like, even the road cage doesn't come through or anything. No, exactly. Whereas so on a, a Dick Johnson car, the yeah. cage comes through and it's. But obviously pissed. they never lifted the bonnet because it never had a cosy engine in it. No. So it was meant just to look like it had centre lock look wheels on it and everything. Did it? Oh, yeah, it had proper wheels on it. It's got a genuine 500 front bumper on. Uh, genuine lower rear spoiler. Obviously the body kit is all in the car. It had all genuine body kit on it. You can see there, look, the original Dove Grey Primer under right. the mirror. So this, what's in the cooler off? Oh, is that a oh that's car? just off an old race car that got. That's I'm, a radiator, isn't it? Yeah, I just chucked it in and out it away. But yeah, this is gonna. We're gonna use some of the Eggenberger parts because obviously Dick used a lot of Eggenberger parts on his cars. All the suspension on Dick Johnson cars was Eggenberger. Uh huh. So we've got all the, and obviously I've had them. I've got them on the shelf anyway, brand new ones. Uh huh. Um, fame at last. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> So obviously, again, it made sense for me to build it because I had all the parts, I have them on the shelf. I know a Dick Johnson car inside out because I own one. So, Best man for the job, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, so we're going to use some of the Eggenberger parts for this. And then th there's another idea looming at the moment where initially we were just going to sell all these Eggenberger parts, but I've had another bit of a brainwave why don't we build the Eggenberger car? Because we've got, which we'll show you in a minute, a brand new Eggenberger race car engine in a crate that's been dyno run, but it's a brand new race engine. Gearboxes, diffs, all the suspension I've got on the shelf brand new. Uh -huh. got a brand new Eggenberger shell, brand new spoilers, bumpers. Amazing. Everything brand new, so we can really build, an, a, a, if you will, a brand new, brand new car. A brand new Eggenberger spec shell car. It'll never be an Eggenberger car because Rudy never assembled it. Right. But I'm hoping to get what's the word I'm looking for? Approval. A, yeah, approval to to build a car that they will accept as a continuation of their dad's work. Right. But it's all his parts. It's all his engineering. I'm just the lucky guy that gets the opportunity yeah, to, to build it, to, to put it all together. But I want their approval and their, um, you know, acceptance of it when it's built to be known as an Eggenberger car. Yeah, type thing. Yeah, yeah. There, you know, and I, and I'm pretty sure they'll be quite pleased uh -huh. with that. To be fair. Well, like you see, you're the man for the job, Paul. You know, so certainly are. Amazing. Yeah. Do I've got to speak to 
um, Thomas Eggenberger, um, who used to race cars himself, and, and uh, put, the, put the idea to him and, and see if he's, you know, give his blessing to build it. And same with his daughter, um, Bridget, and, and, and go from there. And if they say yes, we'll accept that, you know, and we, we want you to do it, then I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to do. I hope you're going to let us come and see it and uh, video it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a look at the parts, what you've got? Yeah. <laughs> right, so these are the... These are the parts you've got, Paul. All brand new, unused, all brand genuine. New. Now that that's probably the best pallet that came. Obviously, the wrapped Two up. Engines. That's a brand new Eggenberger race car engine. Brand new. You see, it was dyno run. Dyno run. Yeah, dyno it's run. Been dyno run. Was that like thirty years ago, though? Yeah, yeah. To test it, make sure everything's all right. Um, so that's complete. Brand new, ready just to drop in a race car. Then well, there's. Would you strip it and? Change your gaskets and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you would, because it's been sat a while, obviously. There'd be nothing wrong with it, but what, what I would always recommend, which we will do if we do use it, is you simply strip it, hone the bars, put a new set of piston rings in, and just new gaskets. Just a quick That's one all to all Just to make sure everything's still okay. So there's a, a lot of money there. Then there's a brand new... RS500 road car engine there. Well, that's a road car engine. That's a road car engine. Well, obviously, what what Rudy will have been given, because obviously he built works cars for Ford, uh -huh. so they will have shipped these engines to Rudy as brand new engines. He would then take them to bits, do all the machining work and, and change Ooh. the pistons and do everything that he wanted to do to make them into that. Wow. So the, and then there's another one in there. Another engine. And another brand new road car engine in there. So there's two road cars and one race car. God, I bet you were like a kid of Christmas when all this turned up. I mean, to be honest, this to me is, well, it's just a, <laughs> it's a bit sad, I know, but you know, yeah, just whatever you're into, whatever this, you... I mean, this is history, you know, it you is? know this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to buy the remainder of Eggenberger's parts. Uh -huh. You know, parts, it, uh -huh. when, when, it, when will this ever be available again? It was, it would Wouldn't? never be. I mean, I tried to buy the, the Bastos car and these parts when they first came up for sale, it must be over 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And it was, I think, 250,000 euros. And the pound was strong against the euro then. I think it worked out at about 180,000 quid. Uh -huh. That was for the car and all these parts. And all the parts. Well, obviously, this is 50, 10, 15 years ago, you know, which was a huge amount of money then. And obviously the cars weren't as valuable then as they are now. And I just knew it was impossible. There was no way I was ever going to get that uh -huh. kind of money. So, and I ended up with the car, as you know. And then to get the parts as well, fantastic. Amazing. And I just, think, I just think it's a shame, in a way, to split up all these parts when there's a shell there, an engine. It makes sense to... Brand new gearbox there. You know, so that's... Um, if you need a running in, I'll uh, strap it in my car and... You could handle the power. <laughs> so there's a brand new gearbox. There's brand new bell housings there, which are magnesium. I was going to say, yeah, the magnesium. Yeah, that's uh, an alley one. But they, them three are... I think that's an alley one there. There's two alley and two magnesium bell Are they a magnesium, there. the darker ones? Yeah, magnesium, yeah, the grey. They're like brownie coloured ones. Has that got some kind of coating on no, I think that's what colour magnesium is. is it? I'm sure it is. I'm no expert on no. metals, but well, that's it. There's, you know, even things like that look a brand new front cross member. Cross member. Which is obviously what Rudy would have started with. And then obviously he would have done all the seam welding on the cross member and the alterations to make it a Group A cross member. But everything originally with Group A cars obviously starts off as a factory item. So did you get all the racks and everything? The all bumpers? Of, yeah, no, the bumpers are second hand bumpers right. that, that we had. There's all brand new steering racks there, about eight of them I think. This is interesting up here, <laughs> because obviously I own the Bastos car. <laughs> well as you know, the Bastos did 24 hour races. Uh -huh. Well obviously when they went to do a 24 hour race, they would take spare engines, spare gearboxes, mountains of wheels, mountains of suspension, but everything they could ram into an Arctic they would take to make sure that car can run for 24 hours. Well, even in all this container, look, he's brand new. Oh, body kit. Body kit painted in the Bastos colours. Oh. And all already trimmed. Trimmed as well. Already cut, look. Well, you can see they're brand new. They've never been uh -huh. on. All the holes pre-drilled. So that if the car was involved in a little shunt, 
they could bring it in, on. rip that arch off, and that one would go straight on without them having to cut it or drill holes to make everything was done to be as fast as you could possibly do it. But yeah, they're the Bastos colours. So how many arch bits up there? How many body kits? Two sets or something up there? Just less than two sets. There Just was less a, than two a full, sets. full set in the Bastos colours. Um, then there's white ones. They're brand new in the bag, white ones, but they're uncut. Right, so there was as they would have come to Rudy and then he would cut them and trim them. There's brand new glass there, all in Ford bags. What, like rear quarters and door glass? Door glass, rear quarter glass, brand new. There's um, the brown glass, because it's brown yeah, glass, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, brown glass, other things that are quite exciting. You know what three door parts are like. Brand new oh, interior door, door parts. Oh, look at that. That's concourse, isn't it? That's just absolutely. Yeah. There was two sets, of, two sets of these. We sold one set and then, as I said, the idea came up to build a car. So we kept hold of them, these brand new front door cards. What would you value that? Just that one door card at it? You don't know, hard to see it. It is hard to say, isn't it? Because somebody who'd want it would pay you a lot of money. Uh -huh. I think we sold a pair for 1200 quid. I was going to say, I was going to say about that. Yeah, I reckon a pair of fronts is worth 2000. Uh -huh. The glass is worth 2000 for four pieces, two front, two rear. Mm -hmm. um, interior plastics, because Rudy in the early cars ran some interior trim. Did panels. he really? Yeah, he did. So there was a load of them, there's a load of Brand new scuttle panels, oh, you know, they've dropped a bit, brand new. There's two of them with all the ends, we've got all the ends there. Whoa. But the left hand drive. What's the difference? The wipers? Yeah, wipers are in a different place. So you can't put a left hand drive one on a right hand drive car. But there's two of them. I need that one of them as well. I'll tap that with us, Paul. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. All, you know, it's just amazing. Yeah, fantastic. And you know, I mean, I know really criminally, if we build a car, we are going to use all these brand new parts. But, uh, why would you not? not? Well, you almost feel you have to, really, you because have to, these right? are the parts car. that came from, from Eggenberger. Right. Even though they're only standard Ford items, to me, it just has to be done. So that's what we would do. There's a brand new front door panels there. Um, you get down from there, you know, man, now mind. Have a week off now. There, look, old door rubbers that go around outside. Ah, I mean, a couple of them have got a few kinks in, you know, we've been moved around for 30 years, but they're worth... I was going to say, they're hard to get hold of now. £250 pound each. I was going to... Uh, easy. Well, look, there's a 500 splitter. Yeah, bracket. Look at that. Where would you ever Genuine find one spoiler. of them? Genuine spoiler. Genuine 500 look with the cutout. Would you reckon that would be worth two and a half, three grand? You know, I'd say two grand. Two grand? Two thousand quid. The, the, that shell out there's got a brand new rear fin on it. Has it? That's 500 fin? Yeah, that's worth two, two and a half grand. And then, then you get to the real sexy stuff. Yeah. When you get down this way, which is what I call the erection section. <laughs> <laughs> rear beams. Brand new rear arms. Magnesium? No, they're aluminium. Aluminium. In the early, only in 86. Did they run the magnesium rear arms? Right. They ran them because they were lighter. But I don't know why they switched to Alley, whether it was manufacturing process, whether the Alley was stronger, I've no idea. But there the is, I think, if I remember correctly, there's a magnesium one. Yeah, that's a magnesium one. You can see the colour there, look. Magnesium's like a browny grey colour. Why did they paint them? I Any idea? No, no idea? idea. Because you know you can't paint aluminium. Or you, um, is that magnesium. much lighter than the aluminium? Yeah, Can you feel the weight? Oh, yeah. Have a look. Can you feel the weight difference? So what the gym you know, Paul. You'll be, like, be like lifting your wallet and man. God, man, you'll be able to go like that with it. That's about three kilos. <laughs> Would you say? I don't know. I I'm going to say three kilos. Ah, oh, that is a bit heavier. And that's and got all the rose bits. joints in here. Yeah. I don't the think there's trends. a massive. I don't think there's a massive amount in it. No, but there's definitely something. Yeah. But I'll tell you what it is as well here, which is interesting. There's Evo and non-Evo rear arms. If you look at that, 
stand that up there. That one's taller. So what was that before? That was an early arm, right? an 87 arm. And then in 88, they made the Evo. They made it longer. Oh, it's beefy as well, isn't it? You can see it. Yeah. But you can see the length difference. Aye, quite a bit. Two, eight, two inches? Yeah. Two half what, inches? What that does, it moves the wheel in the wheel arch further back. Because on the Sierras, the, the, as the which suspension goes up, the wheel ends up going further into the wheel arch. Uh -huh. So if you make it longer, so the wheel's further back, it stays closer into the middle of the arch. Right. So you can sit the car lower, but keep the wheel where you want it to be. Right. And that's why they're longer. So they're what the class is, the Evo arms. Well, the ones we've had remade, we've had we copied the Evo arm. You've gone for the Evo yeah, arm? so it's a longer arm. Because uh, you've had these remade, haven't you? In yeah. aluminium. Oh, cast, yeah, in aluminium. So these, these are all original. Original items. I wonder who'd done his machine and work back in the day. Did he do it himself? Did he have it no. in house machine shop? He machined all his own engines. Uh -huh. Did all the machine work. Well, obviously, all these castings that he would have just Ford. subbed out. Ford will have had it made somewhere. These are wrapped up, but there's uh, a brand new upright there. Aluminium upright. There's one there that's built up. So you can see it's got the spindle in it. Aye. Again, brand new look. Amazing than this mine. This is the start of it. <laughs> we'll start down here. Right. There's a titanium exhaust. Titanium? Yeah. Now this in if you ran in DTM, you had to have the exhaust coming out the back in DTM. Right. Obviously on touring cars had side exits. Side exits. So if you went to do DTM, you'd have to quickly put this exhaust on the car, which meant removing the rear anti-roll bar. You have to take that off. Right. Anyway, look what we've got in here. Let's drag this out. These are all brand new Eggenberger parts. They're the top mounts. Top mounts for the front suspension? Front suspension that go into the turrets. I can't cut the boards. Bags and bags of them. All brand new. Is that what's in here as well? Just more of them? Yeah, more top mounts there, yeah. And, and as daft as it sounds, there's that many of them. We could sell, sell quite some. a lot of them and keep a lot of others, but I don't know why, because it's Eggenberg. I don't want to get rid of it, <laughs> of it you know. <laughs> there's all rear suspension tow links. There's all the bits that go in them, where the rose joints bolt into. What's that, sorry? Tow links, you know, on that aluminium rear arm. Uh -huh. That, that goes into the back of the, um, where the, the arm comes that way with the wheel there. Uh -huh. That It has two rose joints on it. That goes into the aluminium arm. That has a rose joint into it and goes to the front of the big hoop and goes up oh, and down right. like that. Right. So there's a load of them in there, look brand new. Are they steel? Ah, oh, yeah, they're steel. And it's just... This is coil over air suspension. Yeah. Not things. <laughs> yeah. For the springs. But yeah, that's right for springs. I think there's I think there's a, a few of them. I think, Quite a few. Yeah, there's enough to keep us going for a week <laughs> or two, isn't there? I think with them. God, it just cans on and on, doesn't it? There's um there rear shocker bump stops, little bump stop rubbers. Do you just pick stuff up and like when you open the box or you just get oh there's a bump stop rubber? Yeah. Just instantly know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Window liquor. <laughs> There's all sorts, isn't there? But it's just amazing. Yeah. It, yeah. Have you been through every? You used to been through every box. No, not really. Have you not? No. I'm, this is exciting for me as it is for you today because I've never lifted these out. More bump stops. Yeah, and this. Um, What's your head? What's that? I don't know. Uh, got you out, Paul. Something you don't know. That's a bump stop. Well, these must be suspension because it's all in the same box, but I don't know what they are. Unless they're just a nylon bump stop. I've never, I can't say I've ever seen them on the car. No. So I don't really know. You've caught me out there. No. You'll have to edit that out because <laughs> you're making me look stupid. We'll go back to these because I know what these are. <laughs> but you know, oh, when you open amazing. boxes and, and, and it isn't just the parts, it's just... The history and everything yeah, with it, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. It's just, just how cool the bits are. Yeah, you just, yeah, you think, 
You know, all these were on Eggenberger's shelf. On, gets me, I tell you. I think there's enough there for me to last about 20 years of building carts. And the rest. But, you know, they're just, they're just nice to have, aren't they? I think. Definitely. There's the first box. Now, you've heard the term 909. Uh-huh, 909. These like, are all 909. Inserts. They're, they're, they're rear shockers. God, there's no weight in that, is there? I felt how light they are. There's no in it? They're brand new rear shockers. Have you got... Did you get springs and everything with it? You just all your asses. <laughs> God! How many is in there? I don't know. Oh, there's more. Oh, it's full. The box is just completely full of them, look. And everything came when it was wrapped up with Eggenberger Motorsport written on it. Are these all front ones? No, Every one, rear, these sorry. Rear, yeah. Now, in this box at the bottom, there is some, but I won't dig them all out, there is some front insert tubes. Right. That go in the uprights uh -huh. for the insert to go into. But I think, these, I think, I can't remember how many there was, but there's, there's a... It's a lot of rear shockers, enough to keep me going. But it gets better than that because obviously that's just the ink, that's the shocker. Then you've got all the aluminium top mounts, all the collets, we've got all them. Springs, everything. Everything. So how much do you think a set of rear coilovers would go for? 909 coilovers? Built up complete, a thousand quid for a pair. For a pair? For genuine 909. Nine, nine ones, you know, but obviously you can buy cheaper versions of uh -huh. them, there's, you know, stuff on the market, but if you want the proper pucker, you Egg don't get them as no. light as that, do you? No. I I can, uh, I've got Gaz Golds on mine, Gaz Gold coilovers. They're three tonne, they're, uh -huh. they're unbelievable. They, you, have, you can't explain how light they are, can you? It's unbelievable. No. So, box number three. Oh, look, more shockers. <laughs> so, we have another box there, but these are more complete, they've got the... The top bearing mounts, uh -huh. mounts on. That's a front one there. Eggenberger tier one. Yeah, they're front inserts. They're what go in the front suspension. And there is some of them tubes I was talking about. They're the tubes. So them tubes screw into the uprights. Is that the bottom, isn't it? That's, That's the bottom. That uh -huh. goes through. So your, your upright sits there. Uh -huh. And then that slides in. Slides in down there. And that nut goes on underneath there. Amazing. So they're all the fronts. I even like the Eggenberger tape on it. I do, I get excited about that, it's strange <laughs> isn't it? But the guy was a legend, you know, is it? Uh, I know, and, and, I know. And I feel privileged because he was one of my heroes, you know, and I had the I had the real privilege of working with him just before he died. Did you? Yeah, at um, Alton Park Gold Cup I got to drive the Bastos car because Gianfranco Brancatelli was driving it. And he had to go home on an emergency. And uh, Peter said to me, do you want to drive the car? I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I did it and Rudy was there running the car. So I was working with Rudy, getting the car ready. And, you know, to come in the pits, because you had to do a, a pit stop. And I remember driving in pits, you know, and seeing Rudy Eggenberger stood there. Waiting for you to pull up. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, you know. And there you mentioned springs. Are they rear? Uh, they'll be fronts and fronts. rears. But all marked up with poundage on them and... Let's have a look. 797 foot pounds. And there's some more, look, there's some more here. What boxes of them? Just boxes and boxes of springs. So, so do you think they put these on some kind of rig and press down to see what kind yeah, of poundage yeah, they would? Yeah, that's how they do it, yeah. Then but obviously we've got the springs here, we've got the shockers, the inserts, so we can build up complete suspension kits, all brand new. So we've yeah. two boxes of springs there. What have we got there? All oh, right. So what we've got here, these are the rear drive flanges. So they go into the diff and the circlip holds them into the diff. Right. So you drive shaft bolts right. onto there. So there. there's, a, there's a, a few of them. But then we've got, oh look, brake pads. I don't know how many is in there. <laughs> Enough to last a lifetime. But when you bear in mind, 
Them brake pads uh, can be two the to three hundred pound a set. Let's just get another camera, Paul, just with a light on. I'll be yeah. two settings. So brake pads, Paul. Yeah, there's a few, <laughs> just a few sets in there. And like I said, these will be two or three hundred pounds a set. God. Front ones and rear ones. They're front. Oh, Jesus Christ. Try picking them up. I bet there's asbestos in these as well, wouldn't there? These? No, no, it's all, all, it? all user friendly materials here, you know, <laughs> saving the planet and all that. Are they used? Yeah, there's some, it'll do a lot of testing with them as well, you see. Uh -huh. They'll mark on the back how many laps they've done. Oh, right. Because if they, if they go, like, do a 24 hour race, they need to know exactly how many laps a, a pad will last. Right. So that when they come in on certain pit stops, they'll say, right, it's a pad change. Pad, ah. Uh, and the, the last thing they want to do is pull the pads out and go, there's nothing wrong with them. They need to know. So they'll test uh -huh. them and test them and test them. And what you'll see is a lot of these lab things written on back of them. Oh, they're brand new ones, but a lot of them, look, they'll tell, they've got writing on them. I don't know what it says because it'll probably be in Swedish anyway. There it is, look, it's all in Swedish. Uh -huh. But it'll be telling you what track it is, and how many, uh, how many laps, laps it's done. done. So again, even amazing. just stuff, things like that, brilliant bit of history, isn't it? It's amazing. And there's a few More. sets. <laughs> is there much of a market for this kind of stuff than Paul? Oh, yeah, massive. Is there? I mean, these brake pads will still be exactly the all same right. as what you can Could buy today. Fine. So I think I could run my Bastos car for quite a few years, don't you? Aye, definitely. Now this one, full of crown wheels and pinions. There's the crown wheel, there's oh, the pinion right. gears. And there's boxes of it, you know, the box is full of them. That's just the bottom, then there's the like bottom, another two. So what we got in here? Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess and see if they're diff bolts. Them blue yeah, ones. they're diff bolts, Are yeah, they? yeah. You feel clever, don't you? But I it's do. only because you know that same as a standard cosy. <laughs> I've seen them on mine. There's all sorts in there. God. It's nice to find it all, isn't it? That's for a coin over, I'm guessing, is it? For the that, spring? Yeah, that's right, spring platform. Top hats. Uh-huh. Brand all brand new. new. That's the kind of stuff I make at work, stuff like that. Is it? Aye. Uh, Uh, bearing seals of seats, aren't they? Caps. Uh -huh. Boxes of them. Bearings. So, what's that? Some kind of diff? Oh, a diff, yeah. Small, isn't it? Yeah. Hold that. What's that there? Now get your light. Oh, they're in inlet, inlet, inlet manifold studs. Aye. These are all sorts, isn't they? All kinds, isn't they? Did you write on? Bearing shoes yeah. and brake cylinders. That's right, yeah. What's in there? Now then. Is that part of the turbo? No, that'll come to me. I know what that is. I've seen it, but I can't remember off the top of my head, but it'll come to me. No point in reading labels because it's all in Swedish. Or German, one or two. Oh, they're steering column bushes, bottom bushes. Do they go in the bulkhead? That's right, in bulkhead. Loads of them. Crazy, isn't it? Put these back and have an investigation in another. <laughs> brake parts. Brake master cylinders. Brake cylinders. I wrote on a lot of them that I'd had a quick look through. I'm surprised you haven't been through them all yet. I would have Well, it's, it's time, isn't it? Look at that. All part numbers are bearings. Tell you what, I hope all the spiders are dead from Australia, they might be in here. See, they're hard to get at them. What they do, you know, when you, if you take your cosy drive shaft off, uh -huh. you get grease everywhere, don't you? Uh -huh. What you do is put them on end at drive shaft. Just to stop the grease getting so all So grease over. don't come out, so you don't have to fill all that, you know, that drive flange that we saw there. Uh -huh. That's normally full of grease. But you imagine trying to change that in a rush. Uh -huh. So you put them caps over end of your lobo joints and the grease stays in the lobo joint. So you don't have to ram it so all inside the, the drive flange, right. it just stays in there. So would that drive shaft still go on with that? Yeah, yeah, that, so just, that goes over drive shaft and then you push it in, put your bolts through. Right. And then there's obviously group A, drive shaft ends. 
Is that what well, that is? There's one, look, there's a cap on one there. Uh -huh. That's a that's end of a drive shaft, low bow joint, a group here, low bow joint. There's just obviously the rubber caps rubber end. that go on the group here, because group airs are different to standard drive shaft. Looks like the shims and that under there. Yeah, a lot of these just shims and are labelled up for sizes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, for idiots like me. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I haven't even been to the bottom of half of these. But I just think if we can build a car, the car will be worth more than the parts are worth. Uh -huh. And we'll have all the parts, a lot of parts left over because obviously spares. you're only using so many shockers and so many bits and pieces. Well, I think you've you? got a box full of shockers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you need look, we've got an two fun, two bad. There, look, genuine, <laughs> genuine Eggenberger cat. <laughs> now here's another for the, you know, I said about the rear shocker. There, look, there's all the. Put that somewhere. The little top. That's the top of a shotter. Top, top of the rear shockers. Oh, that's light. Is that titanium? It's light, that isn't it? Isn't it? It's like my wallet, that. <laughs> be, oh, that's it. That's for the rear beam, isn't rear it? Rear beam mounting plates, yeah. There. Is that for the rear shocker? Just, no, they're a bit big for that, aren't they? I'm just trying to think they? what they're from. They're a bit big for rear shocker. Mm, I don't know what they're doing. There, what going rear shocker? That's what I was thinking of, but I don't know if it would be different yeah, on a rear one. There, I'm guessing if we, if you grab one of them, now I'm positive. Uh -huh. I'm not as daft as you, look. <laughs> Thank God. God, just bolts and all kinds. There's drop link spaces them. The aluminium? Yeah. That goes round there. No, it doesn't. I was thinking that, that what the hell is that? Well, like, no, that was not that is yet. <laughs> We'll work that out later. Well, again, there's just boxes of more, more plates. Now, that's what I thought it was, but that's it. What that does, that goes around the shocker, front shocker, a lock, like a locking thing. Like a lock and collar? Yeah. Aren't really that got a thread in the middle there, yeah, does, that, hasn't it? That screws onto it. There's that uh, drop link thing. Put your light in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just bolts and shims and all sorts, isn't there? People watching this going, oh, I need that bit. Yeah. Oh, I need that bit. There, wheel nut bolts for the uh, for all the three split rims. Yeah, split rims together. That's obviously for, to hold the wheel on. Yeah, that's front, front or back. That's uh, rear. rear rear spindle because the rears have got the. If you look at the rears, they've got the splines in. Right. And that slides in to the rear. Drive shaft? No, there's like a, 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 a when the, the bearing's there, then on the back of there there's a big aluminium thing that slides on that the drive shaft bolts to. Right. And then what there is is a bolt goes right through to hold it all together. And the front ones. That looks a use, that one, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a used one. The front ones are threaded, look. Look at that. It's got Alan a date. Alan Moffat, 1988. You know what car that's from? No. Alan Moffat's ANZ car. The white one? Yeah, that's what that's off. Do you know where the car is now? Yeah, I know it is. It belongs to a um, Peter Jones in. Well, there's two. There's two cars anyway. Is there? Peter Jones in Australia owns one of them. Peter, I've got your spin. <laughs> That's nice to see, though, isn't it? Oh, it is. Silly things like that. There's a few second-hand ones in here, but there's a lot of brand new ones as well. The box is just full of them. Look, front and rear. God. If you build a car, would you use a brand new one? Oh yeah, definitely, right. yeah. I mean, I would is that wrong? The only thing that goes wrong with these is obviously the threads wear. Uh -huh. Other than that, there's nothing. No, that's the thing. how light that is. I know. What do you think that's made out of? Aluminium. Do you think that's alloy? Aye. I would say that's alloy. You know metal better than I do. I've got, there's a gun at work, you know, where you can zap. Yeah, you can test it, can't you? Aye, and it zaps, tells you what elements are in it. Well, these bear in mind when you think there, Eight hundred pound each. Are they? That's what we sell these for. You've got boxes. And we've we've had these remade in aluminium, 
and they're 800 quid each. Oh, can we mention the price what someone paid for everything? What, for all these bits? Uh -huh. No. No? What kind of value do you think they would sell on for? If you broke it all up, well, what do you think? If you, sold them, that, if you sold them for £800 each, uh, then uh -huh. we are shockers. Even bare like that, they're worth £500 a pair. And there must be 30, 40 Easy. sets in there. Easy. Now here's, here's a, there's my nice look. They're hard to get. They are original RS500. That goes between the radiator and the intercooler. Does it? And it directs the air. Is it just plastic? plastic. The, you can't get them. You haven't been able to buy them for 30 years. You got two? Two. And that's what they were fitted to the race cars, we already put them on race cars. Oh, so it's off a road car as well? Yeah, yeah, they're fitted to the road car. Don't forget, most of the stuff on an RS500 race car, uh, road car, is the same as the race cars. Mm -hmm. Brake bells, front brake bells. Now look at these. Brand oh, new. Diff cases. Brand new diff cases. So we've got... We've got the diff cases there, we've got the crown wheel and pinions there, uh -huh. the dry flanges there, we've got the front noses in another box, so we can build the brand diff. new diffs, brand spanking new diffs. Would that be the same as a road car part? No. No. <laughs> so we've got more than these, I know there's two in this box, but we've got more than two, I think there's seven. Ooh, brand new discs. There we'll it is. There we'll rear brand new discs. Yeah. We'll be watching out for spiders in there, Paul. There might be a huntsman or something. I'm not bothered. <laughs> there there fronts. Brand new front discs, two pairs. Oh, this is... Oh, I forgot them. This is uh, what I call an excited box as well. I love, you know, the trinket boxes. All anodized parts. Yeah. Is that heavy? Yeah. <laughs> There's some more that have been anodized. They're rear shocker mounts with little bobbins. The rear shockers. We should have different sizes, I think. Yeah, the small ones and big ones. They're steering arms. So you're, they're bolt onto the bottom uprights and your track rod end goes in there. Oh, right, right. So they're steering arms. More of them. Oh. Steering yeah. arms? Nope. Like off the steering rack? Compression strut. Is it? What that is, that goes on there, that goes on there. So that's your um, track control arm. And that's your compression strut. You obviously have rose joints in there and in there. Uh huh. That's Steer. off a steering arm. That's, that's a steering arm. arm. Yeah. I don't know what that is. They're different. All different colours. Now there, I know what they are. They're the front anti-roll bar drop link. That's what they are. More steering arms. More bobbins. More bobbins. God. Whoa, still Ford. Oh, you got excited Ford badge. <laughs> there for fuel pumps. Oh, all right. From uh -huh. the fuel pump, then you score a good fitting on there. That's for the fuel pump as well, is it? Yep, that's right. Yep, banjo bolts. I'm never going to run out of these, do you? <laughs> yeah, I know what they are. They're mounting blocks for anti-roll bars. I've got to see anti-roll bar blocks. Yeah, make two of them. For front and rear. It's funny because you can see, even see how they've been made. Like a bit of aluminium box section, like aluminium. Box, and then, and just, then just drill it and then cut ends drill off. Drill it, I chop, saw the ends. Nice amount. Aye, uh, 21, Dread, that's 21 milli? For the size of the well, yeah, or something? Yeah, it will be about that, yeah. Because right. like, obviously there's a nylon bush goes in there. Because there's different sizes, isn't that? Well, yeah. 21, that they'll one's be, 20. It'll be front and rear. 25. 
Ah, well, the anti-roll bars differ for different... Different trucks? Yeah, well, right. yeah, different thicknesses uh -huh. for different um, rates. So they'll have different blocks, because I'll show you the anti-roll bars when we get to them. There's right. different colours. All the anti-roll bars are different colours, so you can easily identify them. What do you want there? Have a look. Seal. Bearing seals, I think. Oh, I see it. Bearing seals, some kind of seal. I just think these are not so much valuable, just interesting. I love these. Everything on an Eggenberger car was anodized red. It's like going through his loft or something, isn't it? Or his, his little garage, just seeing what he's got stashed away. Awesome, isn't it? Now this one is a sexy box. <laughs> this is a very, very sexy box. <laughs> so you own the pants, is it? <laughs> Now that isn't very sexy, <laughs> but these, they, well they are because you see them there, they're, you, are, you struggle to get them. Oh, it's for steel joints. Right. Steel yeah. right. But there's no bush in them, is there, if you see? No you rubber. struggle to get them? Yeah, because nobody does them for Sierras. Did they wear out or something like that? No, they? I mean you just struggle to buy them. Right. More steering arms and just bits and pieces in there. Now, not really giddy, but what is giddy in here? Just move this box, whatever this is. Oh, you know them tow links? They're the, where the rose joint goes through before they're assembled. So you put the two rods in there, two Oh, arms. right. So that's to be welded up. And yeah. That is sexy, that mind. Brand new calipers. Front. Yeah. Massive these as well, aren't they? Yeah. Only a four pot, but because obviously these are so old, yeah, what pee. people forget is, with modern materials now, you can, th th these are done for heat soak, to get rid of the heat. That's uh -huh. why they're so big. Right. Obviously with modern materials now, they can make the caliper a lot smaller and, and, and has a better heat sink in right. it. So that's why these are so big, because they're old, but they are genuine. AP calipers. AP group A calipers. <laughs> Look at them. They're sexy, aren't they? And there. How many's in there? Oh, that's it. There's only three. There's three. But they're just unreal, them, aren't they? Right. Now this is this is ex an exciting box. That's the bottom half, because we have the other half somewhere. We have a genuine Eggenberger rear uh, sump. What, oh, a Campbell cover? Oh yeah, Campbell cover. Did you want Campbell covers? Yeah. Now that's the bottom half, look, because they bolted together. Oh, right, that's for the, the sump. bottom half of the sump, but look at that. Wow. Now you can tell it's a Ford Works team, can't you? Who so, could afford? to right. have that made. So is that for when they go around the corner that'll shut? Yeah, it slows it, yes. Yeah, it keeps the oil in there and it slows its movement down. And there's the other bit to it. The sump. And an oil pickup pipe. Right, the oil pickup pipe. So that, you see, bolts onto there, look. Right. How lovely is that? Amazing. We have the oil pickup pipe with it as well. Three grand for that. Jetting? Yeah. I think you can name your price. If, if someone needed that, where else? Where would you get one? And you imagine you trying to get that remade. How much that uh -huh. would cost to get remade? Yeah, that, when I opened that box, I was proper. <laughs> proper nice, nice find that. Have you got oh, it? Oh, have you got it? Have you got it? Now, that's a clutch, clutch basket, yeah. Dash panels. Oh, hi. Well, all laser cut. Now, they're later cars then, so they're the same as my Bastos car. Because on the early cars, it goes that way around. Them holes were in. Right. That's the video gauge, that little display. It Put tells you all different, you know, when you click through and it tells oh, you all, right. that's for your rev counter. But on the early cars, they didn't have them holes in. That's for the AP 
brake biased display. Right. So the little battery goes in there and that's the display for the ABS. What does uh, radio stand for? I'm not a clue. No idea? But that was just to check your temperatures and yeah, pressures and stuff, exactly, wasn't it? Yeah, so they're nice. There's they go on the bottom of the rear shockers. Right. The spring sits on there. Uh -huh. They go in the bottom of them. More bump, bump stops. stops. More drive shaft drivers. This is a bit random. Now, nah, well, there's all the anti roll bar. So they've got the sizes on. They're the, you know, them aluminium blocks with different sizes. The aluminium blocks go around them, and the anti roll bar sits inside that. Right. So you're not rubbing metal against metal. Uh huh. So there's all the bushes. Oh, you remember I said to you about that, that uh, rear spindle? Oh, uh -huh. with the splines on it. That's what goes, that goes on to the back of the spindle right. when you drive shaft bolts to that look. Gearbox. Ah, gearbox mount thing, isn't it? Goes on there. Aye. So that's just the same as a road car, is it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Fuel pump. 1989 oh, DTM. Used. Boy, can history, isn't it? You feel like you would have to put it in a frame or something and... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just a bit of history. So again, that's a... a Do you want about them selling merch, like the hats and stuff like that? I would rather have a used fuel pump than a... Do you know what I mean? Like some yeah. actual bit of a race car yeah, that's being yeah. used. I mean, the trouble is, the good thing is, like with that Moffat spindle we found, you, you, you can't really dispute that, you know, because it's come with all these brand new uh -huh. Eggenberger parts. But a lot of trouble with a lot of memorabilia stuff is anybody can write anything uh, on something. It's authenticated. You know, it's, it's proving it is what it's meant to be, that's the thing. Like me and you know that's real, but you would sell that and someone's got no proof, have they? No. Luckily, they have with that one, but I wouldn't sell it anyway. No. Get ready. It's going to be a long video, this one, Adam. That's alright, that's alright. Your hand? Yeah. I know what's in this. I've seen the label, but... I'm pretty useless to anybody that doesn't own an Eggenberger car. Look at them. Looms. Brand new engine bay looms. How many's in there? Two, three? That's not an engine bay loom. I don't know what that is. But they are. Now look at the quality of them. Motorsport connectors, right. they go straight into top of ECU. That does it, yeah. There, I would imagine if you had to have that made now, fortunes a couple of grand uh, at least, probably more. It. And I don't know how many there is. What is it? Three, four, engine. and these are genuine as well, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're all genuine, which again. Very valuable item, but to a limited person. Oh, that's a limited market. Um, the thing is, the Eggenberger cars rang a Bosch 1.7 ECU. Right. Very, very trick and advanced ECU in period. Very trick. But that loom will only fit that ECU. Uh -huh. And to be quite honest, if the ECU ever packed up on one of them cars, I'd, you'd, you'd never get a second hand one. Uh -huh. Even though they were fitted to a lot of different cars, RS 200s, things like that. So really, you'd end up changing the management on it and putting it on a more modern one, which right. would mean you'd have to change this loom anyway. Change the loom. But anybody with a genuine Eggenberger car that wanted a spare one... Uh -huh. Still, it, still it amazing it's, having. Yeah, it's a valuable item. Uh -huh. and, it, and it's not so much the value of it today, it's just when you think, you know, to buy that lot new, there's probably 10, well over 10 grand in there. If you had right. to go and commission okay. someone to build someone it. to build that now. Brand new airbox. Genuine Looks RS5. Like is it? Oh it's a three door one. Three door yeah. one, that one, isn't it? Yeah. Um what are them? Pedals. Second hand washer bottle, but a proper Eggenberger one. Got a fitting. Oh, really light. Oh, I really like clusters. Pedal boxes. They're obviously what was sent to Rudy for him to modify. To switch into, the, you know, to do his conversions. Uh huh. Brand new throttle pedals. 
God, you know what them are? The rubbers? They're side mouldings. I was going to see her to talk. To talk rubber, wouldn't it? Oh dear, oh, brand new. Aye, right, brand spanker. Shame they've coiled them up, look. So a lot of them are knackered. Would they not straighten out? No. They've got metal in? Yeah, they've got metal in them. That's a shame, isn't it? But obviously back again in them days, they didn't really worry too well, much. You couldn't afford, didn't you, if you wanted yeah. one? Get a new but that's one. nice, isn't it? A brand new three-door. Brand spank and new. Inner door handles. Door handles, speaker covers. Speaker covers for dash. Steaming cowl shrouds. Clock surrounds. God. Now there's something you can't get. Find them. They're the mirror. Oh, hi. But blanks. Blanks. So you can screw the touring car DTM mirrors on. Did all Sierras come with door mirrors back then? Yeah. Because you know, like the Fiestas. No, you could, the, um, the 1.3Ls and that only had one door mirror on one side. On the Sierras? Mm. So maybe that's what they are? Yeah. Well, that's a left hand one. That's a right hand one. Uh -huh. So there's a pair. Interior door handles. Door handles. That's interior door cover plastic. Steam cowl and covers. Windscreen, in, inside windscreen rubbers. Door rubbers. Door rubbers. More door rubbers. God. They're nice, aren't they? Isn't it? But again, left hand drive. God, it's amazing. Cool, uh, it? From Ford's as well, that new, if you, if you go to Ford's now and buy that, it would, it would only be cheap, wouldn't it? Yeah, if you could still do it, quid. probably 30, 40 quid, no. something like that, maybe. But well, I, I bet you can't get them. No, no, not now. Can you imagine all Concourse boys now getting all giddy with themselves? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Headlights, backlights, indicators, brand new backlights. And that's a real light cluster bit. Yeah, that's the same as in them other boxes, them real lamps, isn't it? The Irish rubbers. Oh, what? What? <laughs> More oh. indicators. I've seen pairs of these selling on eBay for five, six hundred I, quid. I have. I mean, how much is that worth, Paul? Like two pair of them. Genuine. Five hundred. Maybe a bit more. Good job, it's well alarmed in here, isn't it? I feel like, I feel like I'm holding gold. <laughs> it's giddy, isn't it? Yeah, brand pair of brand new headlights. Glass there, with right? care. Glass with care. Fog lights. Fog lights. Because the early, the early cars ran fog lights. Is that what they are? Hi, fog lights, hi. Yeah. They're headlight glasses. Two brand new headlights. There's a few of these as well in here, you know. There's a... One, two, two, two sets. Two and a bit, isn't there? Two and one. Oh no, two oh, sets. Two yeah. sets. Mate, this is unbelievable, this mine. <laughs> like, because these are the pits that would fit on my, like, road cars as well, isn't it? That's it, yeah. But obviously, you know, people forget the race cars had to have uh -huh. headlights and, and everybody ran the steering column shrouds and things like that. They all ran them. But, you know, again, when, when, when you could buy it from Ford, it was... Manage? Yeah. I mean, this stuff's more exciting to road car owners. Aye. The engines and mechanical parts are all for... Brand new heater blowers. Heater box. Just want to come together. Vents. Yeah, they're just heater Sometimes blowers. It, that's a seal, isn't it, for around your heater blower box thing? Yeah, that's For right, the bulkhead. Yeah. I just start working on it. The, yeah, they're the cables to pull them. Oh, to right. Work uh -huh. the heater. This is all heater blower stuff, isn't it? Yeah, brand new motors, look. The heater blowers. And there's all the cases to build them up. But again, just nice, aren't they? It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. 
You'll be having yourself a little dream tonight, won't you? You'll be waking it's up just, in the middle of the night. Oh, uh, good, uh, <laughs> It's just the bits you don't see like this, like you just don't see. Okay, even that, boxes look, like look at this. that look, right? That's the original a heater blower, but with a proper motorsport motor connector bit on, the on the end. It. Would, so, what, would they have used the blowers in the race cars? Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, you think if it's, young, if it's raining. I'd de the windows. Yeah. Wait till you see in here. <laughs> can I open boxes? Can I just have a look? Yeah, of course you can, yeah. A lot of them have written on glass rear seal, runner seals. Oh, right. Rear view mirror, another one. Another rear view mirror. Well, oh, this, look at that. Concourse boys, ooh. Oh, hi. Mad. I looked all over for one of them for my car. You did. Without the white bits rubbed off, like yeah, the Yeah, that's it. One. They always go, gets rubbed off, don't they? Yeah, that's an in indicator relay. Nice. See, Rudy will have just rang up Ford and said, I need a load of these, I need a load of these, and they've just sent them. Sent boxes. The old fuses in that. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll have just sent box loads. Switch. Bo bo box loads of stuff for him, won't they? See, but back in the day, obviously, it wouldn't have been worth great money, will yeah, it? Exactly, it just, you know, for oh, when, when you think of yeah. Ford's budget to run, it? to run race cars. Is that a bit of an invoice? No, it's just an original Ford. Is it? But look at that there. Boot lock and key. God. So, we'll look at, well, have you got the locks? How, how would you match that key to your door locks? Well, you can't, can you? Can you not? No. Well, you can, yeah, actually you can, can't you? Because they have a key number, don't they? But you would need the locks to match. Yeah, but you can change the inside of the barrels on, can't can you? Can you? Yeah, because they're all little drop things, but they're all numbered and they just put them in different orders. So you can, if you remember right, years ago you could go to your Ford dealer with the key number right. and it would build you a lock. Build a lock? Is that another one? Boot lock and keys, aye. Yeah. That's the other side. Your headlight, your wi uh, windscreen wipers and that. Headlights. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, isn't it, how the stuff like this excites you, but... Door catch mechanism. Oh, that's the big one that goes into the back of the door. You know, the catch mechanism. Aye, perfect as well, isn't it? See, there's all the rods, look. Aye, I noticed them. They go in the door from the handle. Yeah. I'm going to have to tell everybody, Anna, do not ring me, concourse, by saying, can I buy them <laughs> logs of you? Nothing's for sale. Nothing is for sale. I'm going to hoard it all. To be fair, it's not really yours to sell, is no. it? No. So that's a nice little box, isn't it, for all the bodies. What's in this one? More steering shrouds. They're front grill rubbers. Oh, all right. Go on grill. Oh, I need some of them. Look at them. Oh, more of them. Aye. I'm guessing they're just poverty specs here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not, but you can, but I've tried specs. buying them from Ford before and they, and they don't even have them listed. More seals. Well, I was going to see a seal. Window winder handle yeah, thing. Do you know what that is? Let's have a look. See if I, that's a brake pedal, isn't it? It is, yeah. You've won a prize. Yeah, and your prize is. <laughs> <laughs> that goes on bulkhead for where Eater Matrix uh -huh. comes through. Uh -huh. It's funny, well, I recognise a lot of these parts. Yeah, you will do. We're working uh -huh. on a car. Do you know what that is? Let's have a look. That, I'm going to see it goes underneath and it's for bearing in the middle of your drive shaft. No, I'll tell you what that is. You know, when you, when you open your drive or open your door, your catch mechanism. Uh huh. You strike a pin that your catch machine and clicks into, uh -huh. there's two bolts in it, isn't there? Is there? That goes inside the rear quarter panel. Right. And I've that's what the two screws go into. I've never seen that bit of mine. No, you probably won't done, to be fair. They're tailgate rubbers. I remember this part of mine is a bit rusty. 
or was when I got the car. Right, bumper irons. And I remember thinking, someone's just made that in work. <laughs> yeah. But that is actually a genuine Ford part. Rear brake light switch. Now there's a prize if you can guess what that is. Ah, that, there's it is, look. You know that striker pin? Ah, uh -huh. That goes on the inside of it, look. Ah, oh, right. Uh -huh. Um. You won't get that, that's a tough one, that. I don't know. You know in your rear door panels, the ashtray. Right. The ashtray pops through and that slides over the back of the ashtray and that they grab the so plastic. So that falling out. So that stopped it falling out. That's a shame because you would have won a free brand new Eggenberger engine if you had <laughs> got that right, but unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they are? Do I win the Eggenberger engine? <laughs> and the idea. That goes in the dash surround. You know where you've got them little adjusters for your um, Head, dimmer yeah. uh -huh. and your white, that clicks white in that speed. place and gets rid of it. Does it? Yeah. There's more, there's more. <laughs> we've got kick panels. Aye. Right. Few them. Were they different colours on the Cosworth to a normal three door? Yeah, they were, yeah. Like the dark. Is that the right colour for Cosworth? Oh yeah, that's all proper proper stuff. Is that heavy? Yeah. You just stand and watch. <laughs> I will. Like. A few bearings. Oh, that's why it was so heavy. Yeah. But don't you worry, I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't get <laughs> don't upset. There's the front noses for the diffs. Is that for your clutch? Yeah. It is, isn't it? Now look at them. Gear stick. For a guest track gearbox. Yeah, you get there. You get her. Loads of them. And the metal surrounds as well. Look. So they're obviously unique to unique to Wagenberger cars. Clutch shims. Amazing. Amazing. Right, come on, grab me this one, mate. Grab that. Manage? Yeah. Just. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll just stand in with you, you poor. Yeah, you just stand there. It's <laughs> alright. What they are? See if I can guess what they are. I'm going to see something to do with the drive shaft. No, mm, no. Close. I don't know. Prop shaft. Prop shaft. That, is goes, it? that bolts onto gearbox nose and then drive. Um, prop shaft goes onto there. Wish I had as many prop shafts as I did then. <laughs> Wheel nuts. Wheel nuts. They look quite thin, them ones. Yeah, the smaller ones. Is there a reason? I don't know. Front and back or something, maybe? I don't know. No, they're all no? the same size. But yeah. That one's got holes in look. It's being used, that one. Yeah. Some of this stuff will have been tested with one. Most of these are all brand new, aren't they? Apart from that one you found. Plenty there. A few wheel nuts. Aye. Let's see if they are Sierra ones. Let's test them against the wheel. I'm sure there will be. Because there could be Mondeo, you see. Oh, alright. So did you get all these wheels as well, Paul? Yeah. So they're the barrels. They're the inner bits. That's right. What we've got there is they're 18 inch. Right. 17. Alright. Oh, 16. And they've all got the size of the water on. Yeah. Seven and a half by 16. Yeah. And there's seven. Then there's the outers. Oh, oh the outer get ones, it. yeah. And then there's your ceiling rings. Oh, right. What they have, they have a little rubber that pushes onto that edge there. To keep the air in. And then when you bolt them up, that rubber gets squashed against the inner and the outer and, com and completes the seal. It. So uh, where's the front? Like the, like the spoke bits? We haven't got them. You haven't got them? No. Because obviously what they do is you have so many inners, uh, inners because the classes are... Um, like a consumable. Right. The original wheels, you only were supposed to do so many races or whatever with them, and then they used to chuck them away. Chuck them away. And obviously the inners and outers, you just altered them to suit. Like be... Eggenberger, you see, ran a, seven, a 16 inch front and a 17 on the rear. Oh, right. In 87. And then in 88, you went to a 17 all round. All round. And the 18s. Have you ever seen the 18s on a car? 
A few cars ran them, weren't did supposed they? to, but they did. But these, the 18s, I think will be Mondeo. Right. Because obviously Rudy went on to the Mondeos after. They have a big uh, dish on them, isn't it? Like the, like the lip there? Yeah, they're the 18s, aren't they, look, you see. Well, if you look... But that would have took the 17-inch inner. Yeah, all the inners are the same. Right, so even the 16-inch? Yep. Yeah. So there's a, a, a ceiling ring. That'll fit them all. Right. See, that fits the 18. Uh-huh. Ah, right. And it'll fit a 17. Yeah, all the inners were exactly the same. Now these are um, Eggenberger one-piece BBS wheels. Nice them. Um, they're seven eight. how light that is. Because of uh, magnesium. Magnesium. There's nice them. Um, two sets of 17 and there's two 16s. Because again, he used to run 16s on the front sometimes. I would think it'll just be a track preference or whatever. They're the more common BBS. Um, split rim that we most people know. Uh -huh. They're obviously original, original ones as well. God, did all this come with it? Everything. I think there was 102 inners and outers. Do you call them inners or barrels? Barrels. Barrels. Yeah, or inners. But most people call them inners. But they are called barrels. And there's your outers. They're 17s, 16s, and, and 18s again. God, amazing. So what I'm off to do is um, get some of these all polished up. And then I've got sets ready to use, if you know what I mean. Uh -huh. and if you want to change them, you can do all. A lot of people now are remanufacturing the centres. You know, the, right. the, um, the sport have, bits. Yeah, but I have aluminium, which is a lot heavier. Like right. the magnesium. Wheels, unbelievably light, then, for a big wheel. Um, but they're doing them out of aluminium because obviously magnesium's expensive. God, it is like that. They are light, aren't they? So what, what I can do is, is purchase remanufactured centres and build them all up. Build these. them all up. And it'll just make the wheels a lot cheaper for me to buy, if you know what I mean. I'm guessing all the doors in that are already yours? No, there's one door. Did that, that came, come in That the... came with the bits. And then there's two doors there. Brand new. Brand new. These came with it. For the air jacks? That's right, original bottle, bottle jacks. So there'll have been two bottles on there. One of them will have been for the tyres. Uh -huh. um, sorry, the wheels. And the other one for the air jacks. The air jacks. For the, for when you say the wheels for the lot of wheel lot in the middle. Yeah, for the big <laughs> for the guns. Gun. Another one for air jacks. The boot lid come with it. No. no. So then, I think we've covered a, a couple, couple of other bits up there. Look, there's some like from metal cross members. Uh huh. There, Ken. Thanks a lot, fellas. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to Paul for having us down as well, mind. Absolutely amazing experience looking around. <laughs> no, Very you're special. Yeah, it's not always nice to see you. There's not nothing else <laughs> out there like that, is there? There's nobody no, else. No, I, I don't think anybody's going to come up with a better <laughs> selection of brand new group air parts than that. No. Hopefully not. Um, I'll leave a link to Paul's face. Go a couple of Facebook pages, Paul. Yeah, we have the RS500 owners group. And then obviously my own, which is Paul in Foot Racing. Uh -huh. I've also got a Facebook group pair, fellas. I'll leave that below on my Instagram. And I'll leave a link to Paul's Instagram. If you want to see some more videos with Paul, check out the videos below. And uh, thanks for watching. And thanks for having us down, Paul. You're welcome. Thank you. See you on the next one, fellas. Spot on, mate. Spot on. Cats up there. I know. It's a little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck do they do it? I, I don't know. know.